This spreadsheet presentation is used to demonstrate the uh, computation of risk return parameters for individual securities as well as to show the construction of the efficient frontier. To do this, we have three securities here um, which are actually stock indices from three economies, the Merville Stock Index from Argentina, the uh, Bovespa Index from Brazil, and the S&P 500 Index from the United States. Now we do know that an index, a stock index, is actually a portfolio of different stocks. In this respect though, we're going to teach, uh, treat each as an individual stock. So this is the raw data set obtained from Yahoo Finance and with these I calculate the uh, rates of return um, for each of the indices. And uh, this is monthly data. And so to calculate a rate of return, for example, for that first one right there for Argentina, I use the logarithmic form equal LN, which is the natural, which is natural log, open parenthesis, the current month's price divided by the pre, uh, previous month's price, close parenthesis, and that's how you got it. And if I were to delete these, all I had to do was simply copy down. All right, just like that. And I have all my uh, data sets showing and do the same for the rest of them. So now, for the analysis, we're going to use these three columns of data and then later we'll do a stock analysis. So going down here, all right, um, I already have the finished product right here. But to show again what I did there, first to calculate the monthly mean return. All right, you want to use the average function. And then you go to the top of the spreadsheet, like so. All right, click, hold, and drag it all the way down to the very last observation. And that's it. And close parenthesis. If I scroll down, you will see my calculation right there. And then you can cr uh, hit enter. And that's it. And then you can copy across, like so. All right. And that's what you have here formatted in percent form. So if you want, you can do that, you know, by just hitting this percent form here and then moving us around your decimal points. Now, to annualize your mean, since the, uh, these are monthly data, you hit equal, click on this, multiply by 12. All right, remember, 12 months in a year. Since we have monthly data, we annualize by multiplying by 12. And then we copy across. If we had daily data, we would have had to multiply by 365. Semi-annual would be multiplying by 2. Quarterly, you multiply by 4. You know how that goes. And then to calculate the sample variance, since we're, we're using sample data, it would be equal VAR, and then you can see right here, dot S, all right, dot S. And in using spreadsheet functions, it doesn't matter typing in uppercase or lowercase, all right? You open parenthesis, and then you go back up here, click there, and then you can simply hold down the shift key, hit the end key, and then arrow down to quickly grab all the uh, observations for the entire row, all right? Scroll down, and then close parenthesis so you can see your work nicely and hit enter and then you copy across that's your variance now then for standard deviation you have two choices you either calculate the square root of the variance sqrt open parenthesis and click on this variance to get the standard deviation or you can use the stdev function dot s for sample standard deviation open parenthesis and but then you'd have to go to the uh, data set and if i scroll down you can see the function again here close parenthesis hit enter so either or you're good all right and then you copy across to annualize your standard deviation you either Hit equal, click on this standard deviation, the monthly standard deviation, and multiply that by the square root of 12. You, see, you do not multiply by 12. You multiply by the square root of 12, right? Or you 
first of all annualize your monthly variance by clicking on this variance and multiplying by 12 enter and then you come here and take the square root of the annualized variance and as you can see this if I hit F2, is the square root of the annualized variance is identical to this. So either you take your monthly monthly standard deviation and multiply that by the square root of 12, as you see up here, or you first off annualize your variance and then take the square root of it. Now, bear in mind, you can format your main. You can format your standard deviation if you want to, as I show here with using percent but do not format your variance leave your variance as is because variance is a squared variable and you should not in spite of what you may see in some finance textbooks want to format it for percent or any other unit of measure okay finally to calculate your coefficient of variation hit equal click on your standard deviation and I'm going to use monthly data and then you divide that by your mean right there and that's how I got these and then you can copy across and that's all she wrote you can format your work in any way you like so from what you can see right here we find that based on the sample uh, used in this analysis that the average rate of return for the Argentinian stock market is the highest. The U.S. is the lowest. In fact, these two Latin American um, markets boast pretty high average rate of return. Now, though, observe that they also are very risky. You can see that the two of them have exceedingly high standard deviation. The U.S. is the most benign compared to, compared to this. So the market priced itself in such a way as to reward higher risk with greater reward, with greater return. Now then, next is to look at how these securities, how these uh, investments uh, correlate with each other. So to do so, we're going to use the covariance metrics. We're going to construct the covariance metrics and afterward the correlation metrics. Keep in mind that you can directly calculate the covariance between two securities using the covar function. So equal C O V A. Well, actually the covariance, right? So covariance dot S will give us the sample covariance. Then you open parenthesis and you're going to get the arrays of data for the two columns that, uh, whose covariance you seek to calculate. So let's do covariance of the Argentinian stock market and the Brazilian stock market. So I'm going to highlight this first for Argent Argentina and if I scroll down so you can see my calculation right here next I hit comma and then I go back upstairs right here and grab all the data for Brazil and if I scroll down so you can see my calculation then I close parenthesis and hit enter and there you have it this is the sample covariance for uh, between the Brazilian stock market and the Argentine stock market and if I reduce my decimal places you would see that that is uh, to make it identical to this you'll see that that's exactly what I have here because this spot is Argentina and Brazil now though, but for us to do it in metrics form, we can't really be calculating it one by one as I just showed here. For that, we need to use the covariance metrics function in Excel. So I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to go to data, go to data analysis. And right here, I'm going to go to covariance right there and OK. If you don't have data analysis, just go to your file, go to options and add it in. All right, now for the input, we're going to go to the top of the file and we're going to do it all, all the three stock indices or as many, stock, or as many securities as you have, all of them. 
all right highlight everything and then check labels as you know the first row includes the labels and then click here for outputs and after clicking here for output click here right quick because if you don't click here you're going to be overriding your inputs so while this cursor is blinking there let's scroll to somewhere nice here on the spreadsheet and choose a spot where we want our outputs to be placed and then OK right there and I'm gonna go home and increase the font size so you see what's going on here well there is a flaw I think in the way that Excel um, has um, in the way Excel wrote the algorithm for the covariance metrics now first off observe that the diagonal elements that you see right here when I use a different color um, than what I use here are actually the variances because as you can see this is the covariance of Merville with itself the covariance of the variable with itself is variance this is the covariance of Bovespa with itself which is the variance of Bovespa the Brazilian index and finally this is the variance of the US uh, equity index but observe that these values are different than what you see right here and the reason is because when I click here you find that Excel actually puts P the algorithm calculates population variance which we don't want because population variance divides the square deviations by n as opposed to n minus 1 so to make this become sample variance you really want to do it physically until that algorithm has been fixed you can do it in one of two ways either you hit F2 the function key that is used to edit and then click here and remove delete the P and then hit enter now you have this to be the same as that or when you click on this you can just go up here to the top uh, bar right there and delete the P and that's it and finally for this one click there and delete the P enter now it's all the same and as you would as you would suspect this off diagonal elements right here are the covariances this is the covariance of Merville and Bovespa the covariance of Merville and the US stock market but observe that these are not identical to this so that's because these covariances are calculated by dividing this numerator that you see right here in the formula by n as opposed to n minus 1 so the correction factor or the adjustment factor really which I've written out here is really the sample size divided by the sample size less 1 in this study there are 145 observations and as you can see here I use the count command to quickly determine the number of observations so that's equal count open parenthesis and you can use any of these three columns just to know the number of observations per um, per column so choosing the central one is the same highlight it all and if I scroll down you'll see the calculation for count it simply counts the number of observations that's how I got this 145 that you see right here all right so let's delete that to ease uh, to get rid of clutter and then coming back here when therefore you go equal 145 145 divided by 144 that's how you get this correction factor right there so what you do that is to come out here hit equal click on this covariance between, between Marvel and Bovespa multiply it by the correction factor to make it correct ditto for Marvel S&P multiply that by the correction factor and then go to the side just so you know where they belong get this Bovespa and S&P and multiply it by this guy right here now as you can see if I may reduce the decimal points just a tad bit you can see that these well are now identical to what I have here and here because these have already been corrected so what you want to do is to copy this into the metrics but be careful keep in mind that these are formulas you see it up, up here all right they're all formulas so when you highlight and you copy and you click here do not choose the quick paste command click this little arrow going down and choose paste values this first one right here all right and now you have it correct and as, as you can see right there copy this click on this click copy click here to paste that pull this down and choose paste value 
now this is all correct as you can see now we can delete these guys right here now we have a correct uh, half metrics half covariance metrics if you want to fill up the metrics right here this is Bovespa and Merville which is the same thing as Merville and Bovespa so you can copy that and place it right there copy this these are all values as you can see so no need to paste special put it right there um, hang on a second this is S&P and Mervil. This is Mervil and S&P. Yep, that's where it belongs. And finally, get this guy right here and put it right there. And now we have a full matrix. Full 3 by 3 matrix. And for correlation matrix, just go to go back to your data set. Go to analysis, data analysis, and click on correlation. OK it. And again, go to the top of the file. Highlight all of these, beginning with their labels. Go down and check labels in first row click here for output and readily click right here in this open window and while it's blinking there let's go downstairs right here and choose a good spot like there and okay and there you have it ladies and gentlemen because in this respect let's increase the font size so you can see it's identical to what i have here uh, correct it to two decimal places. So right here we can see that the correlation between Bovespa and S&P and the US stock market is actually the highest. The correlation between Merville and the US stock market is the lowest. The correlation metrics need not be corrected. You can simply copy all these uh, this half metrics and make it a full 3 by 3 matrix in the same way I showed you up there. And this concludes this first part of this presentation.